Hey, what's going on, everybody? BDO44 coming at you with another video. All right, so I want to talk Bulls Bucks first round matchup in the Eastern Conference. Um, it's really tough, man. It's really tough because the Bulls started this season off as arguably the best team in the Eastern Conference, and if this series started back in January, I'd have it up in the air, honestly. The one constant about this situation, no matter what is Giannis. At the end of the day, um, Giannis Antetokounmpo is an unguardable force, one of the greatest players to ever played a game already, um, and he continues to ascend, and, and he, at this point, he's the great, like, the balancer, the great equalizer, I guess is what you could say, in terms of, at this point in his career, at this point in, in, in the way the Bucks move, it really doesn't matter who's on the floor with him. He can drag a team by himself the way Braun used to be able to do. And I mean this in theory. I don't mean he's going to do this. I mean, like, just in terms of what he's capable of of doing and what the, what type of load he should be able to take on at this stage in his career. At this point, he should be able to run with pretty much anybody and still do a lot of damage. Um, and, and that's just what it is. The problem that I think the Bucks are going to run into in this particular series is I don't really think they're that deep. I think after you get past those first eight guys on that team, after you get behind Bobby Portis, and then you start reaching behind some of those guys like, uh, you know, some of the guys on their bench, <clears throat> I think you start finding that they're a bit thin. And I don't think that they can withstand injury. As long as, as Drew Holiday and, and Middleton, uh, Brooke Lopez, Bobby Portis, Giannis are intact, they should pretty much win every game they're in in this round honestly I don't think the Bulls can really get a whole lot out of them if Giannis is playing up to his potential and the rest of the pieces just play as they normally do and the reason why I think that is because the Bulls ended the season kind of basically 500 you know that what they've been dealing with all year long is just the injuries just injuries you know ever since they had themselves in a situation where they were um, the number one seed in the Eastern Conference uh, they ran into the Bucks. And a guy by the name of Grayson Allen uh, kind of knocked a guy by the name of Alex Caruso out of the sky and sent him uh, to the ground as to which he had a arm injury of some sort that kept him out for a good portion of the season. And you have to deal with Lonzo Ball's injury on top of that as well that kept him out for a good portion of the season. Patrick Williams was hurt uh, at the beginning of the season and has been out pretty much the entire season up until about mm, maybe three weeks ago. Uh, Kobe White. Uh, he's kind of had a off-balance role, but he's starting to work himself back into the equation. Obviously, Zach Levine has missed a lot of time this season. Um, so you see all of these different pieces that they've had that you know, to deal with in terms of going in and out of the lineup. But the good thing about that entire process is this. They found things in the process of it. Vucevic has been relatively healthy all season long. Ayo Desunmu has been a high-powered rookie that they found can do similar things to the players that they've had go out of those lineups. So he adds to their overall depth and in the interchangeability of the pieces on the team. <clears throat> and then you consider the fact that they've brought back Patrick Williams, that, that Kobe White has found a role on this team, um, that they have found pieces in other areas that have also been able to help them. Uh, just in general, players that can do the dirty work, players that can pull down boards and, and push people around. Uh, you know, I think the, the fact is when you consider who DeMar DeRozan is on top of all of that, you see him as somebody who too can be interchangeable as a piece like that. They can put up at their best, in my opinion, 160 points if everybody on the team is having a great game at the same time. I think the problem with the Bulls is they haven't had their entire team at any given point this season. Now, here's where it gets tricky. I think this is the first time where they actually have everybody. Patrick Williams is back. Kobe White is back. Zach Levine is back. DeMar DeRozan is back. I'm not sure what's going on with Lonzo Ball. I know Alex Caruso has, has been playing. I'm not sure what his conditioning is like. If Lonzo's able to give it a go in this series, they're back. They have everybody. And that makes them scary given the fact that I look at the Bucks and say they're not 
very deep. They have good bench players. Don't get it twisted. And we mentioned Grayson Allen. He's going to be very important in this series. Why? Because the Bulls have a very special gripe against him, as we've already discussed. And he's going to make this series very spirited just by being there. Clearly, you got to look out for the referees in this situation because they're going to be looking for physical plays. They're going to be looking for technical fouls. They're going to be looking for the flagrants. You got to expect that they're going to want to get back at this dude. So that in and of itself gives us an entirely different dynamic other than it just being a spirited playoff matchup. Alex Caruso is a very liked player in Chicago. Uh, what he does for their defense and what he does for their ball movement, coupled with what Lonzo Ball and, um, you know, and Ayo do for their, their defense, having him be removed from the lineup really threw them off. Even though you love Zach Levine's ability to score, he's missed time, as we said, and he's not a facilitator. A guy like Alex Caruso compliments Lonzo Ball in ways that really not too many players uh, compliment one another in that backcourt. Um, so, so you look at the various weapons that Chicago has and you just say, if only they had an athlete that could just stay in front of Giannis. And then you look at Patrick Williams and you say, he's been looking strong to start this, you know, the, these, this, the end of the season and the beginning of these playoffs. He's in shape now. I'm not saying he's going to be able to stop Giannis, but that is his functionality to be a long defensive athletic player who can pretty much cover a lot of space really, really fast and put pressure on that defensive player on the other end by scoring some and, and using his mid-range ability to keep players off balance. Him being a part of this lineup, with Io being a part of this lineup, with, with the various players that they have that can just kind of do those things defensively. Lonzo Ball, hopefully he'll be back. Caruso, hopefully he'll be there at 100%. They have a lot of defensive players to really throw at the Milwaukee Bucks. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, Giannis. But here's the deal. It's not that I would ever question whether or not Giannis is going to be able to meet the intensity of, of what's going to be thrown at him because I'm not going to question that. I believe he will. I have no question about it. It's just that he has to do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's going to have Patrick Williams thrown at him. He's going to have Io. He's going to have to, you know, Vucevic. And those are guys he should be able to finish through. But he's going to have to do it. Pat, um, Bobby Portis is going to be very important in this series. Obviously, he had an interesting time with Chicago. You know what I mean? He started his career there. The fans love him there, too. Uh, but, unfortunately, his time in Chicago ended in such a way where he ended up punching somebody in the face, broke guy's jaw. And, you know, that's kind of what we remember from his time in Chicago. Um, so I don't think it's going to be a situation where you expect him to get booed or anything. Everybody in Chicago was on his side in the situation. But you just understand this is a spirited matchup from his point of view because this is a team that he's going to be um, very you know emotional about, emotional about playing in these playoffs. So it's a lot of storylines involved in the situation. I think about Lonzo Ball once again, and I think about um, uh, Drew Holiday. And the fact of the matter is that I could argue those are the two best defensive point guards that come to mind. I'm not going to say anything, you know, I ain't thought this through, but when I think of defensive point guards, those are the first two that I think of off rip. And I just feel like, um, you know, when, when you have those two players on the floor, they can make stops for their teams. They can win games for their team. And having them both go head-to-head -head with one another, uh, that, that could potentially on paper be, be something very fun to watch. So you just love what they have. You know, at the end of the day, you're looking at the Chicago team and you're saying, if anybody can upset the Bucks and catch them off guard, it's the repeated players and scorers and clutch closers and mid-range shooters that the Bulls have. They have the players to give the Bucks fits. They just don't have anyone that I feel can stop Giannis from going for 50 and 20 if he wants to. That's the only problem. So let's say they have games where Giannis gets in foul trouble. Well, I think that game favors the Bulls in a lot of ways, depending on how well Middleton is shooting, depending on how well uh, Drew Holiday is able to stay in front of whoever that incredible scorer is, he's going to have to guard. And that's going to be the thing. You know, Giannis is going to have to exert a lot, of def a lot of energy on defense because the Bulls do have a lot of offensive weapons. 
when you consider Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan. Those, both of those players can go for 50. Like both of them, if they're hot. The problem is it's only one basketball. So, um, you know, at any given moment, you just have to understand it. You just don't know where it's coming from when it comes to the Bulls. What if Kobe White goes for 30? What if he's, you know, hot from behind the arc? What if Alex Caruso decides to give you a good 25? Which is not really his game, you know, but he's capable. We've seen him do it, NBA champion with the Lakers. Um, you know, what if what if Lonzo decides to have a triple-double suddenly, um, you know, with an emphasis on scoring? We've seen him tap into his best scoring ability. That's why I think he's so important in this series because I, I think if they're going to have any shot at winning this series, it's going to be because he completely neutralized Drew Holiday. You know, it's one thing to have Drew Holiday lock down your best player. It's another thing to have a player lock down Drew Holiday. And if you can make him so tired in that series and, and make him so mindful of fouls, uh, you, you can you can possibly uh, kick them in kick them in the, in the side real good. Um, so so Io is going to be important. Vucevic killing on the inside is going to be important. Making sure that he gets out uh, on guys like uh, Bobby Portis and uh, Brooke Lopez when they shoot, because uh, floor spacing is going to be very important in this series as well. Um, who, who, who spaces the floor better. And like I said, that mid-range shot on the Bulls' side of things, they have several players, DeMar DeRozan and Patrick Williams particularly, that take advantage of the mid-range. Uh, so it, it's a lot to like, man. And I'm telling you, the Bucks are a bit slim. That's what, me, that, that's what concerns me about them. They can't, they can't really get in foul trouble like that. Not against this Bulls team with a DeMar DeRozan who's going to, if the game's close, close you out if possible. For which it may be, depending on how, like I say, Middleton. You know, those guys are going to be so important. The pressure on the other Bucks to play well is more important in this series and probably any other series, maybe even going forward. Outside of maybe seeing one of those Western Conference, Memphis or Phoenix. Because I do think... As I'm, I'm thinking about this Bulls team, they are one of the deepest teams in basketball. And one of the reasons why they are where they're at, despite having all the injuries they've had, is because they've had players who could hold the, down the load without those stars at those same positions. So foul trouble will not be as much of an issue for that team. In fact, you may think you're doing yourself a favor by getting Zach Levine in foul trouble, but then you get a hot player coming off the bench and you feel terrible about it. So this is a dangerous, dangerous series as I break it down in real time. And y'all know that's how I do things. Um, but at the end of the day, the great equalizer should bleed through. He really should. As I think about DeMar DeRozan and his hip-hop, his heroics, hip-hop heroics. I don't know where my head is, but his late game's heroics um, and what he's able to do uh, down the stretch of a game. I just know he's going to have a buzzer shot or a game winner in this series. That's inevitable. That's happening. I think this series could possibly go to distance. Depending on the schemes that Chicago comes up with defensively to trap Giannis. Depending on how hot Middleton's feeling. Because if you're having a 35-point Middleton series, you ain't when, you know, Chicago can't beat that. But if he's average, you know, a lot is riding on Lonzo Ball. A lot is riding on who to play and when. Because they, the Chicago has so many players, you know, in terms of their depth. There's so many different things they could do with their lineup. You just don't want to make the wrong decision if you're the coach. Which brings me to coaching in this situation. <clears throat> you know we've talked about Budenholzer a lot. And if you followed me last year, you know I was, around this time of year, very skeptical of, of Budenholzer. I wasn't a believer at all. I thought he did a lot of things that didn't help his team. I thought he played through Giannis in situations where he should play through Middleton. You know, and, and that's a thing as well. Um, sometimes running through Giannis in, in the past has been a problem for the, for the Bucks. It made their offense stagnant. It made it so that they were one-dimensional. But when they ran through Middleton, he pretty much had an opportunity to roam, spend more of his time doing things that that kind of complements the game itself, and, and, and he was basically unstoppable. They won a championship doing that. I doubt they get away from it. I'd imagine they have their system in place now where that's that's no longer even an issue. Um, and that's that's what you'll have to understand, though. Budenholzer does tend to do things sometimes that can be unorthodox. Uh Things that don't necessarily seem like they're playing into his favor. But what he's usually doing that I've found over time throughout the series is that he's he's setting the other team up when he does that. So if you see a game where he does something unorthodox, let's say he leaves Bobby Portis in the game for 
38 minutes a particular game. Just know that he's doing that so that by game six, you think he's using Bobby Portis in such a way that probably won't be used. He's that type of coach. He's, he's, he's a strategist, and he will use unorthodox methods to throw off the other team. And 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 and, and it, it is you as you watch a series play out with Budenholzer, you understand that he's just doing, he's just working a strategy. That's all it is. So it it, it requires patience, um, but but it's already proven to have won a championship with this group. So I'm curious to see if if he's if that's going to be the case this year, if we'll see some of that, um, and if it and if and if he does try certain things, will it hurt him in a series like this, where you have such uh, uh, a broad spectrum of attackers, you know what I mean, from that Bulls team. So, Zach Levine's going to be important, you know. A hot Zach Levine can make this a very different series if he's going off for 50, you know, that type of craziness. Uh, but I don't know how he would be able to do that, given that they have so many weapons on the team, you know. So, the thing about Chicago is as long as Lonzo Ball and Alex Caruso are in rotation, you really don't ever have to worry about their ball movement, and you never have to worry about their defense around the perimeter. As long as those players are on the floor at any given moment, they're a problem. It's when you remove those players from Chicago that you have a bunch of pieces that don't necessarily fit. But the key to that is I.O and the ball movement and passing abilities of DeMar DeRozan. That's what made it so that they were able to stand firm because they still had those facilitators keeping their offense coming together, even though those dynamite two-way guards were removed from the lineup. And since they had those depth with the white and all those other players that could play that position, plus that anchor in the paint, Vucevic, it made it so that they were able to stand firm, even though in theory they shouldn't have been able to, to do so. I guess what I'm saying to you is they're built to last. They're built to be able to lose players and still function. I don't know that Milwaukee is. And honestly, I don't know that it matters. Why? The great equalizer, Giannis Antetokounmpo. As long as he's himself, all that strategy, all that great stuff that I think should make sense he should, in theory, be able to overcome. But this is the year where you take things as for what they are. And when you have more weapons, and when you can attack from more angles, I think that really does work in your favor. So I'm going to say the great equalizer, coupled with my reality mindset, makes it so that I'm at an impasse as it pertains to this series. Because truth of the matter... I think logic tells me that Giannis should be able to overcome all these different things that Chicago brings. And Chicago's been struggling so much, they haven't really been able to beat any really good teams pretty much all season long. But I also understand that's because of the dynamic of them missing certain players that are now back in the lineup. So I'm inclined to believe that they're more like the Chicago they used to be at the beginning of the season when they weren't missing anybody, except now you got to bring Patrick Williams back into the equation, for which I think is a very big deal. So what does this leave me with? The question mark about Lonzo Ball's health. That's what this leaves me with. And honestly, half a Lonzo Ball ain't enough to overcome the great equalizer. So I'm going to tell you that Milwaukee's going to win this series. And I'm going to say this series is going to last longer than it should. I'm going to tell you this series is going to go about six games push maybe seven but I'm gonna say my gut says six Milwaukee in six the great equalizer should overcome because Lonzo Ball ain't a hundred percent if you get a hundred percent Lonzo Ball at the start of this series if for some reason he comes out and has a big game to start the series and then suddenly he's fine for the rest of the series I think you could actually be looking at an upset because I look at Zach Levine, I look at DeMar DeRozan, and I look at all the complimentary pieces that make it so they don't have to play no damn defense. And they don't have to look for other people to make shots. All they have to do is what they do great in a situation where they are in a playoff situation together when they know that their system works because it's worked all year. It's a lot of stuff to like about Chicago, but I just don't think they have anything, including Patrick Williams, that can say anything to Giannis at all. It's just... 
Giannis is going to have to go for 40, 50, 40, 50. Like, that's what I see coming. Or Middleton and his guys, I mean, they're a well-oiled machine. They just won a championship, so they know each other. But they're getting a massive test to start this first round. And I think most people think Chicago's going to come in limping, but they, like I said, they got players back. And those players make them damn near impossible. So, foul trouble will be important. Free throw shooting will be important. Shot selection will be important. Pace will be important. Uh, keeping an eye on Grayson Allen is important. Uh, the team that keeps a cooler head will prevail. The experience of Milwaukee also works against Chicago. Um, obvious experience of just winning a championship. But, you know, they have some guys who've been through some wars as well in Chicago. So, you know, obviously Alex Cruz won a championship, so you got to count for that as well. So, yeah, man, this is going to be a good series. It's going to be a good series. Obviously, home court is very important. Milwaukee has that. And uh, you just expect uh, the champs to come out with with, a, with an intent and a focus on getting back to the finals. And uh, Chicago, as talented as they are and as clutch as those players can be, is is an early obstacle in the way of the champs getting back. And I just don't see Chicago being the team knocking them off. But I tell you, Chicago does have the weapons to do so. And that's what I'll leave you with. My name is BDL44. I thank you all for watching. I'm out.